day. Welcome to News Now on TV 360. I am Thelma Okoro. A female suicide bomber on Tuesday detonated her improvised explosive device in Nanawaji village of Gubja, local government area of Borno, Iobe State, northeast Nigeria, killing scores of people and injuring 26 others. According to reports, those injured in the suicide bomb attack had been taken to the Damato Specialist Hospital for treatment. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but suspicion is bound to fall on members of Boko Haram sect. The Islamic group has carried out numerous similar attacks in the northeastern part of the country. Meanwhile, on Monday, no fewer than 13 people were confirmed dead after twin explosions by Shisha Boma hit Baga, a town in the northeastern Nigerian state of Bornu. Gunmen believed to be members of the Boko Haram sect invaded Debiru village in Hawu local council in Borno state, shooting and slitting the guts of villagers. Witnesses say about 20 people were killed in the attack. The attacks reportedly took place on Monday. Locals say security personnel were not on ground to repel the bandits, who also set some houses ablaze. Hawu, which borders neighboring Adamawa state, is over 200 kilometers away from Meduguri. Nigeria President Muhammad Buhari held a meeting with state governors in the council chambers in the presidential villa. A major issue that topped the meeting was the issue of unpaid salaries of workers in different states. At the end of the meeting, which held on Tuesday, President Buhari and the governor resolved to forego the proposed financial bailout plan. The meeting began at 10 a.m. with Vice President Yemiyoshi Banjo and governors, deputy governors of some states in attendance. According to the Nigerian Labor Congress, 18 states are currently owing worker salary, spanning for as much as 10 months. In today's meeting, the governor suggested that the federal government refund state governors all the money owed them for federal government projects carried out in their states. Still on the issue of unpaid salaries, Imo State Governor Rocha Sokorocha has made a passionate appeal to workers in the state to remain patient as his administration works out plans to pay salaries owed. Okorocha, who said this in a way Imo State said, he was committed to ensuring that in no distant time, all salaries being owed by the state government will be paid accordingly. He revealed that the government does not have an intention of downsizing or slashing workers' salary has been reported. Nigeria's treasury is virtually empty. This is according to President Muhammadu Buhari. President Buhari made the revolution while speaking with state house correspondents on Monday at the presidential villa in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. He also revealed that aside from the empty treasury, his government has had inherited millions of dollars worth of debts from the previous administration. Buhari said it was embarrassing that the situation had degenerated to the point where federal and state governments cannot pay their workers' salary. He also said although he did not say how much he, he met in the Treasury, he promised to put in his best to salvage the economy from the brink of collapse. Now, President Buhari may be trying to lower the expectations of voters by painting a grim picture of what the task ahead of him lies. However, Nigeria's main opposition party and former ruling party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has told the president to stop giving Nigerians excuses and get to work. The PDP said, quote, the, government, the present government's pileup of excuses for possible failure in delivering on its campaign promises to Nigerians is evasive, diversionary, and preemptive. End of quote. PDP National Publicity Secretary Oli Sametu, in a statement on Tuesday, said the party noted to dismay President Buhari's statement that he met a virtually empty treasury and huge debts, saying that such statements only underlines the fact that the present administration is really not equipped to face the challenges of governance. The party said the president and the APC were privy to the nation's dwindling economy, occasioned by global economic turn, downturn and fall in international oil prices even before the start of campaigns. PDP said it is eager to see the APC and the president 
unveil their economic roadmap and blueprint for governance so as to enable the party, through robust opposition, provide credible alternatives and options for their policies and programs. Nigeria President Muhammad Buhari on Monday met with all the service chiefs inside the presidential villa in Abuja. This will be the second time the president will be meeting with the chiefs since he assumed office, which was over three weeks ago. Nigerian armed forces are very ready. We have briefed him. But one most interesting thing about it is that we are going out much happier because he has shown to us that he is still a soldier. He has updated and reached our strategic plans and we are happy that we are going out very rich. Second item that we also did was to also the movement of the command center to the northeast. We have briefed him on how far we have reached on that. On that one again, he has given us some additional uh, assignments to go on that. But very soon the center will be on. And I also want to assure you and assure Nigerians that with what we have come out of this meeting, we are very enthusiastic that the issue of Boko Haram will soon be over. I, as a permanent secretary, I also feel like going to the Batulua because he has given us hope and that we have seen peace and security in the very near future. The Nigerian police on Monday arrested 45 armed robbers and kidnapping suspects in Lokoja Kogi state within three weeks of the deployment of a special operations squad to the state. Police spokesman Emmanuel Ojuku said at a news conference that the suspects included a relative of a former minister. Items recovered from the suspects during the separate raids include arms and ammunition, charms, as well as ATM cards of different banks. Officers and men of the special squad were ordered into Lukoja by Inspector General of Police Solomon Arashe on the 27th of May 2015. And within three weeks, the squad has been able to record a number of arrests. Among the suspects paraded is the uncle of a former minister from Kogi State. He, however, insisted that he was a candidate. He was a candidate in the recent House of Assembly election in the state and not an armed robber. Police spokesman Emmanuel Ojuku maintained that all the suspects have confessed to these crimes they were arrested for. On the fourth day of June, around two o'clock in the morning, operatives raided. Gidan Gwari in Lokoja area, suspected to be the hideout of hoodlums, which always emerged from the bush along Lokoja and Jokuta Highway to rob unsuspecting members of the public while being armed. The following persons were arrested in the course of that raid. Aliyu Bello, age 27 years. Lawali Bello, age 20 years. Sule Adamu, age 41 years, Husseini Memei, age 30 years, and Ibrahim Suleiman, age 25 years. The following age groups were recovered from them three single barrel guns, one double barrel gun, and 13 live ammunition. These suspects have made useful statements. Aliu Bello particularly admitted that they are taking part in several armed robberies and cattle rustling escapades. The Nigeria Security Def Civil Defense Corps has denied carrying out an ongoing recruitment exercise warning members of the public to disregard any information to that effect. The Commandant General of the Corps, Dr. Adi Abolurin, told journalists in Abuja that the Corps isn't recruiting yet and anybody who gave anyone money hoping to secure employment with the civil defense would have done so at their own risk. Officers, was there payment of one naira over anything on promotion? Uh, we have told the public, as at now, we're embarrassed when we see over internet recruitment going on. Apply now. Obtain your form now. Contact this number now. Civil defense is not replacing. 
Civil defense is not recruiting, civil defense is not enlisting, and civil defense have no program at the moment for recruitment exercise. Should there be any, please, for God's sake, we make you as part of us, get them arrested, even if they wear our uniform, hand them over to the next security agency of government, and we're saying not only for investigation, but for prosecution. Equally, we're also seeing it as a surprise. In view of the fact that people saw and heard what is the position of government concerning uh, to study abroad. And uh, we had people are shouting on net over pay money and go abroad, pay money for foreign uh, training program. So whosoever person would be foolish to do that knows that already government had already set their mind. So why are you not going to be foolish to the extent that you have to pay money for anybody? Equally, I don't think any agency will want to be recruiting uh, uh, on net without a proper advertisement as to an exercise that we want to take place. So please, as far as the court is concerned, we do not pay one naira to anybody, and should that be anybody who pay one naira, for what reason, we are not aware. But ours is to ensure that uh, we arrest such a person. Yaba College of Technology Governing Council has cleared itself and its rector, Margaret Ladipo, of all financial improperty leveled against them by Ulugbenga Ibirogba, former bossa of the institution. Addressing a press conference today at the school campus, the chairman and governing council of Yabatek, Ebenezer Babatokpe, told said the police and other relevant agencies have carried out their investigations and have cleared the rector of all allegations. In spite of our huge contributions to national development, we are aware that there has been a campaign of calumny against our person and an attempt to redirect attention from our leadership prowess, all in an effort to bring down the college from its front seat through falsehood and character assassination in the press. Although the former bosser of the college, who is behind the spiteful and vengeful campaign, is in court, and the court has ruled that status quo ante be observed, he has continued to provoke the publications of venoms against the college and its leadership, based on sheer flies and evil machinations. That the petitions being circulated by Olubuenga Ibirawa are not new. They have been in circulation since its inception in 2013. The Inspector General of Police, Head of Service of the Federation, Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, and our Noble Council have investigated these lies. All of us independently came up with the same verdict. The petitions are frivolous, spurious, provoked by vendetta, and they found the embers of parochialism. The Inspector General of Police has even ordered that Ibira will be charged to court if you shared strongly by the Director of Public Prosecution of Lagos State. He has continued to deepen in his evil conceptions and fabrications based on shameless and blatant lies. The civil gentlemen of the press, as I said earlier, the college will continue to be great for the huge investment these past four years, few years, and we trust that the labor of these few years will never be in vain. Um, I, got, I, I came into office meeting a buster that was appointed three months before I got there. He came from Ede. I spent, I was in Yabatek before he came. And on my, um, on getting to Yabatek, the boss I felt he was just in charge of everything. I gave him free hand. I never had problem with anybody before the boss had, but he never wanted to work with me. And he kept on documenting lies against, against the rector. Lies, and recently against the council. So you can imagine, but you see, he actually took himself to court, and that was why he was suspended. Because as public servants, we are not supposed to do that. So if you look at it, the issue of security vote, it got to a stage, the petition that was circulated, 
was actually connected to him because all the petitions were investigated. He said he circulated all the petitions. The IG team came to the college. They did a thorough investi investigation and they came up with their report, which was submitted to council, the chairman, and the governing council members. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll look at other news stories. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back to News Now. Africa Regional Organization for Standardization, ARSO, has called on all AU member states that are currently not members of the organization to endeavor to at attain membership by the year 2017 as directed by the African Union, according to the organization. This will help to boost trade organization among African states. Chief Executive Officer of the National Standard Bodies, NSBS, in Africa are meeting in Abuja to fine-tune details of common standards of goods and services across Africa. The President of the Body and Director General Standard Organization of Nigeria, Dr. Joseph Odumodu, said having common standards across the continent would strengthen the competitiveness of Made in Africa products. Is it? possible for Africa to begin to trade with each other. Because I know that if Nigeria and South Africa, or Nigeria and uh, Cameroon, or Nigeria and Kenya trade with each other, that trade will be more efficient, either in terms of moving the goods, or even in terms of the effectiveness of the cost of that transaction. Why should Africa account for less than 3% of the world trade? a very huge continent with all the promises that we have. I believe that under the auspices of standardization, we can change all these statistics within a very short time. I believe that is why we're here today. Because when we begin to trade with each other, we will boost our economies. They will become much stronger. We will be able to feed our people a lot better. We will be able to build capacities in various areas of human endeavor. I believe that these are the kind of issues that we must begin to challenge ourselves with as we talk about standardization, harmonization of standards, and all issues around trade within the African continent. Oil prices remained flat on Tuesday as strong European economic data and optimism a deal be struck between Greece and its creditors offset the impact of a supply glut and a stronger dollar. Prices recovered after falling earlier in the session, moving into positive territory as European shares climbed to a three-week high on expectations of a Greek deal. Brent crude was one cent higher at $63.35 a barrel after closing the previous session, up 32%. U.S. crude for August delivery fell 27 cents to $60.11 a barrel. Strong European economic data supported prices, despite a heavy global surplus of oil that has led to millions of barrels being afloat at sea, as sellers struggled to find buyers for cargoes. To international news now, Rwandan intelligence chief Emmanuel Karenzi Karake has been arrested at London's Heathrow Airport in connection with war crimes. The Rwandan government branded the arrest as an outrage. General Karake, who is 54 years old, was accused of ordering massacres in the wake of the 1994 Rwanda genocide. He was arrested by UK police officers under the European arrest warrant on behalf of the Spanish authorities. In 2008, Spanish investigative judge Andrew Morales indicted General Karaki for alleged war crimes along, along with 39 others, current or former high-ranking Rwandan military officials. He's also accused of ordering the killing in 1997 of three Spanish nationals 
working for Mercedes Del Mundo in the state. Pakistan's prime minister has called for emergency measures as the death toll from a heat wave in southern Sindh province reached nearly 700. The National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, said it had received orders from Nawaz Sharif to take immediate action. The army is also being deployed to help set up heat stroke centers with temperatures reaching 45 degrees Celsius. Officials have been criticized for not doing enough to tackle the heatwave crisis. There is anger among local residents as authorities because power cuts have been restricted or have restricted the use of air conditioning units and fans in the country. Matters have been made worse by the widespread abstention from water during daylight hours during the fasting month of Ramadan. To sports now. Coach Stephen Keshi met with Nigeria Football Federation NFF Disciplinary Committee on Tuesday to answer questions on why his name appeared on a list of candidates to manage Ivory Coast. However, goalkeeper Vincent Ayama declined the chance to appear to answer questions about comments he made about playing an international match in Kaduna. The NFF executive board will now have the final say on any punishment on a day yet to be decided by the board. Keshi, who signed a new two-year deal with the NFF in April, was on a list of 59 applicants published recently by the Ivorian Federation to take over from Frenchman Hervé Renard. Meanwhile, Super Eagles captain Inyama made uncomplimentary remarks regarding safety and security in Kaduna for a 2017 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier against Chad. Enyama, who is the Super Eagles' most capped player with 101 appearances, could face a lengthy ban for his comments. Paris on Tuesday officially announced its bid to host the 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games in the country. This will bring the global sports event back to the French capital for the first time in a century. The announcement in Paris marks the start of a two-year selection process where the world's most visited city will face off against the likes of Rome for the right to play host to the tournament. The International Olympic Committee, IOC, will announce the candidate cities that made it to the shortlist in 2016 before the vote of the whole city in the summer of 2017. We've come to the end of news now. We thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma. Okoro.